This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a new guest, and I'm excited to have him on the show. Uh, they actually uh, they trade on the TSX under the ticker symbol uh, ZEN. We're talking about Zenyatta Ventures, and our guest today is uh, Aubrey Evely. Uh, thank you, Aubrey, for coming on the show. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, give my listeners a little bit about statement of uh, who you guys are and, and, and what you do. Uh, Zenyatta is a mineral development company based in Ontario, Canada. We discovered a very rare form of graphite back in 2012. And it's a volcanic form of graphite rather than your usual very abundant type called sedimentary or flake type graphite. Exactly. Go ahead. And it turns out that this material is high purity, very crystalline, um, and it lends itself to things like batteries, anodes for batteries, fuel cells, the bipolar plate in the fuel cell. And more recently, we're getting a, a lot of interest and in, uh, developing applications on the graphene side. And graphene is typically a single layer of graphite. So um, we're getting a lot of interest in that, especially in 2016. Uh, even today, uh, there's an article out about us um, talking about our work at the University of Sussex in the UK and then Gurion University in Israel. Now, the graphene is a lot stronger than the graphite, is that correct? Graphene, uh, once you're able to isolate it, is one of those miracle materials. It's (laughs) going to change our world like plastic did or the silicon chip did. Uh, Every major corporation in the world is working on it, um, doing R&D. There's billions and billions of dollars being spent uh, in every country. Um, Asia seems to be spending a lot of money and uh, I've developed graphene institutes. The UK, where it was discovered, University of Manchester, has also developed a graphene institute as well. Uh, but the US is also doing quite a bit of work on graphene. Now, you guys had a, a significant advancement uh, related to uh, sensing in the development of the first graphene oxidized. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so more recently, we put out some news at the University of Sussex where they took our graphite and they converted it to graphene quite easily with a very high yield. And that, of course, means uh, inexpensive. The other important part of this story is that it dispersed very homogeneously. It mixed very well and dispersed very well in the, in the rubber composite. Now, it's pretty much the same results we're getting out of Israel, but they're putting it into concrete there. Interesting. Now that's very important. It's very difficult to get a nanomaterial dispersed homogeneously. And in this case, the Zenyatta material disperses extremely well. So uh, I was looking at uh, some of your 8Ks and 10Qs and uh, the Albany graphite, better known as the FGO, uh, it's used for many things. Can you give my listeners how big of a market space this is going to be and, and, and what impact it's going to make on your company in the future? Well, we're targeting various uh, markets. We're trying to determine where the biggest volume and the best value will be. But if I take one area, one specific targeted area, and that being concrete. Now, we all know that concrete is a big market in the world today. It's 30 billion tons consumed annually. It's a very big market, especially over in Asia. Now, in Israel, what they're doing is putting one kilogram of our graphene into one ton of concrete. Wow. You're not going to be able to target all the concrete sector. You only want to target the high-performance concrete or the ultra-high-performance concrete. Things like concrete for bridges and tunnels, Uh, various specialty items in buildings. That particular market is roughly around a billion. So a billion tons of concrete, meaning a billion kilograms of graphene. Um, I don't have to tell you how big that market is. And um, it enhances the concrete. It makes it cure faster. 
It goes from 28 days to less than 10 days in curing. Um, the, it gives it tensile strength, something that concrete doesn't have. But when you, when you enhance it with graphene, it gives it tensile strength. The other important factor here, and this is about the environment, the cement industry produces a lot of CO2. One ton of cement equals one ton of CO2. In our case, our work is shown to reduce the amount of cement needed by 25 to 30%. And of course, that in turn reduces CO2. So that's just one targeted market where we could obviously benefit greatly and society can benefit greatly. My guest today is uh, Aubrey uh, Everly. He, uh, he is the CEO of uh, Zenyatta Ventures. They trade on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol ZEN. They also trade here in the United States under uh, the ticker symbol ZENYF on the OTC uh, Q, QX. Let's change gears here and, and talk a little bit about your flotation pilot. Can you bring us uh, up to speed where you're at on the testing of that? Yeah, so we're in a pre-feasibility study right now, and uh, that means optimizing and enhancing the flow sheet as well. So we've done everything at the pilot scale. We're now moving to the pilot plant, and um, that's going extremely well. And that's under the guidance of our metallurgist uh, by the name of James Jordan. And we're the contract company that we're using is SGS. It's, it's a global uh, multinational company that... It's got expertise in uh, in processing. I was going to ask you, who's all participating in, in this uh, pilot program? Well, I just named uh, SGS, obviously, as the key contractor. But we're also getting funded by the Canadian government on this and also the provincial government of Ontario. Uh, so we're getting a lot of support. So where do we go from here? Uh, I don't want to say you guys are are in R and D, but you, you have no revenues. So for my listeners, what's uh, what's the game plan for the second, third, and fourth quarter for your company? Well, we're going to target getting the pre-feasibility out. The pre-feasibility study is very important to further define the economics, and uh, that means uh, continuing with the. Uh, business development and the application development, which we're working on globally. We're, we're working with in excess of 40 companies right now, uh, a lot of Japan, South Korea, the UK, Israel, and the US. And um, the other thing we have to do is carry on with our process flow sheet. And both those will feed into the report and we should have that out late this year. After that's complete, we go into a full bankable feasibility, which starts uh, at the beginning of 2018. My guest today is Aubrey uh, Evely. Uh, he is the CEO of Zenyatta Ventures. They trade on the TSX Venture Exchange under the ticker symbol ZEN. They also uh, trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol ZEN. YF. In closing, Aubrey, is there anything that you would like to get out to my listeners that maybe we didn't get a chance to talk about? I would uh, have people investigate a little further, not only Zenyatta, but the graphene world. Uh, it's fascinating. It's extraordinary material. Uh, we happen to have uh, the material that converts to graphene quite easily. Uh, that's very important uh, in terms of lowering your cost and developing the applications uh, for this material. Um, but uh, check out our website, uh, check out our news releases, and you can call our company at any time if you have any questions. Their website is www.zenyatta, that's Z-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A dot C-A. Aubrey, I want to thank you for coming on the show, bringing us up to date on the graphene and your company. I wish you nothing but continued success, and hopefully you'll come back on the show 40 or 50 days and give us an update. Thanks, Aaron. Really appreciate it. The following program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire LLC, which is responsible for the following content. The opinions and information provided on today's show are those of the guests and of those of the respective companies they represent, and does not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of this station. Uptick Network encourages all listeners of the show to do their own due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that'll work for them, or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of today's show may have paid to appear on the show and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Network or this station.